It is a courtroom shocker. The man convicted of hitting and killing Lexington police officer Brian Derman does not get the sentence a jury recommended. If you've already been to the beach this year, consider yourself lucky. If you have plans to go soon, this is what you are up against, and you can see it looks nasty. She was found in her van. Her van was found right here near the office. You can see the orange marks on the road. That crash reduced the business's storefront to this, just bits and pieces of glass. The train goes over Southland Drive right here. You can see the overpass above me. Police and investigators used a path kind of through here. They went through all that brush. It shows the moment the ground started shaking. That bold green line you see right there, that is what was recorded in Kentucky. We just got an email from the Kentucky Transportation Department. I want to read you that from my phone. It's that really good packing snow. Might be fun to play with, but look what it's doing to Man of War over here. Glenn Donahai found guilty of second degree manslaughter. That is a lesser charge than murder. The charge that prosecutors were fighting for in this case. We are right in the middle of this latest one. Some spots, it's hard to tell anything has been done, but the work is going on around the clock. And everywhere you look, people are helping each other. When you have nothing left, the things you used to take for granted become what you need most. Uh, they've got shampoo and toothbrushes and toothpaste. Employees from Eastern Phone and Computers have been collecting the supplies all week. Each bag has one of each item in it. Once their ATV is full of the bag, I guess it's going to be about it. Then hot meals from the grill. That's enough to get us started, ain't it? The four wheels have helped heads deep into Raccoon Creek. This community has really come together. Along the way, nothing is where it used to be. We passed King Village already. But when they see someone home, they stop. Hello, we're with Eastern Telephone, and we're out today delivering lunches. The drop-offs are a welcomed break for those in the middle of hot, messy, exhausting work. And you can't really stop and drive somewhere and get something. They just don't even realize how much of a help it is. I see at least three people, so I'll take three of these. The deliveries don't stop there. There's some little kids. They might want to eat. And with each stop, we're just trying to, to help y'all in some little way. <laughs> they realize it's those little things that really do mean so much. I can never write enough thank you notes. Good deeds. That's what it's all about. So what's next for the people of Pike County? If you ask them that, they'll tell you really it's just a waiting game. They're waiting on FEMA, waiting on their insurance companies to find out when or even if they can rebuild. We've seen a lot of emotions out here today. We've seen anger, sadness, and just devastation. This is not how Memorial Day was supposed to go for that family. Tonight, they are waiting on answers as police continue to investigate. More in tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 6. The pain of what happened in this apartment on Lexington's East End spilled onto the street this morning. The victim's grandmother in shock. <laughs> Friends in disbelief. She just now starting her life just now beginning. Neighbors shaken. It's not fair. <laughs> and for her mom, it was just too much. She had to be taken to the hospital. All my prayers go out to him and and I hope I hope Karen's gonna be okay, her mother. This is 19-year-old Tamisha Taylor's Facebook photo. Friends and family say she was fun-loving, graduated from Henry Clay High School last year, and was studying fashion design at a Cincinnati art school. She was in town this weekend visiting. She now got, got, got her life going real well yet, you know. She just now starting her life just now beginning, you know, and for, for somebody to kill her like this, you know, it's, it's not good. Her boyfriend, identified by friends as Trey Williams, was also shot in the apartment, but he's expected to be okay. We have no reason to believe that there was any kind of forced entry. Um, we are looking for someone other than the occupants of this apartment as our suspect for this case. Police search for evidence inside and out. Dogs sniff for a weapon in the apartment's backyard, but there was no immediate signs of a suspect. Just emotions left after a young life was cut short. Something must have just gone terribly wrong. That's all I have to say, because I don't know anybody who would do anything bad to them. They were the salt of the earth. Mm. So. And you are now looking at a live picture of one of the many security cameras that are in this neighborhood. This surveillance video is high atop the apartment building where that crime scene is. Lexington police are going to review that, hope that that has some answers for them. But at this point, they won't tell us if it shows anything or what it is doing to help them at this point. The other key for them will be that survivor. Remember, Trey Williams is still in the hospital. He is recovering. They hope he can provide them some answers too. maybe even crack this case. Inside this Boyle County hair salon, 
people are talking. A beauty shop's a good place for a lot of gossip. And today's gossip... We got some good ones. <laughs> ...seems the farthest thing from the truth. A lot of people have thought that I was just kidding. But it's no joke. Vicki Hasty has the shocker right here in black and white. $13,548.27. It's a dramatic increase from her bill last month for $213. Well, I knew it couldn't be right. A spokeswoman for Intercounty Electric calls it a mistake and blames it on a computer estimation. Somebody for sure didn't look at it before they sent it to me. The company says it's working to correct the bills. Vicki says consider yourself warned. And older people, that's on a fixed income. That just opens up their bill and writes a check and sends it in, not thinking anything about it. And their bill could be wrong, too. The company says Vicki's bill will be adjusted, but not before one big scare. They could cause someone to have a heart attack. And she's holding on to her bill. I'll frame it. As a souvenir to remember one bizarre five-figure mistake. Now a relative is breaking the silence to LEX 18's Adam Baker in hopes of heating up this cold case. Estill County has a secret. Irvin holds a mystery, and Stevie Rogers doesn't want anyone to forget it. We just want answers. Rogers was born after her cousin, Loretta Lynn Willoughby. She never got to meet her, but through family stories, she feels very close to her. She had a little boy. She was a wonderful mother. Um, she loved him more than anything in the world, and that's probably the thing that I heard the most about was how much she loved her little boy. But the stories about her life stop there. Nobody really knows what happened. It was here in Irvin in February 1985. One day, the young Estill County mother was here. The next day, she was gone, vanished, seemingly without a trace. Three months later, her bones were found in a wooded area near her Irvin home. It was ruled a homicide. No arrests were ever made. There are always rumors and in instances like this, and you don't know what's true and what's not. But now, could answers be just a click away? Rogers and others are keeping a Facebook page for Loretta alive. Maybe people will be a little more willing to help if they knew, you know, that there's still people out there that loved her and, and you know, they want to know what happened to her. Some tips have already come in on the page. Rogers has hope. We just want the truth and justice for her. Because this is a secret that's been kept for too long. Covering the news in Estill County, Adam Baker, LEX 18 News.